A few years ago, Google did some research, and they wanted to understand what makes their most successful teams so successful. And they started by looking at the obvious thing, which is the composition of the team. And they looked at the ratio of extroverts to introverts, what kind of universities these people went to. But they couldn't find anything in the data. It wasn't until they started looking at how these teams work together when they found something interesting. They found that the best predictor of team success is something called psychological safety, which basically means that team members feel like they can take risks and be vulnerable in front of their colleagues. See, the reason that I never felt like I could be myself in school was because I didn't have any psychological safety. I mean, I was a really curious kid, but I vividly remember comments from teachers such as, like, Ansi, stop doing that. You know, we're currently reading chapter seven and not three. And that embedded me with the feeling that it's not OK for me to be myself. Fast forward to Google, and it's the polar opposite. There, my curiosity was appreciated. And for the first time, I truly felt like I could be my honest self in every single team meeting. That's the difference in psychological safety. So yes, I'm sure a lot of us know that experimentation is the future of growth. And I'm sure a lot of you in this room are already making some kind of a transformation in order to be more agile or more experiment-driven. But that's not possible without psychological safety. Because when you start experimenting, the majority of your experiments fail. I mean, some of us will go back to our teams on Friday, and we'll be super excited. We'll be like, oh, guys, I saw this amazing live demo. It was fantastic. We need to start experimenting. And then your colleagues will be all supportive. They'll be like, yes, 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 let's do it. But for the majority of us, we'll go back to our teams on Friday with the same enthusiasm to which our you know, colleagues will respond by creating a 27-slide PowerPoint presentation outlining all of the reasons why this will never work in our company and why we're complete idiots for having thought so. Now, the question is, which one are you and which one do you want to be, right? So research has shown that 50% of employees don't speak up when they have something to say. So psychological safety is incredibly important. How do we as business leaders go about creating psychological safety in the workplace? Harvard researcher Amy Edmondson has been looking at psychological safety for years, and I dug into her research, and I found a few maxims that we can apply immediately to start driving this in our teams. The first is that we need to underscore the importance of getting everybody's ideas and contribution to our whole team and our company, right? So these days, we have no idea where the good ideas can come from. So every team member needs to know that their ideas are truly valued. And secondly, this is really straightforward, but we actually need to ask for honest feedback. We need to encourage people to speak up. And when they do, we need to thank them for it, right? We want to create a positive feedback loop. And finally, as leaders, we need to be honest about having failed ourselves. Because no one wants to speak up about a mistake that they made in a team if they think that everybody's perfect and has never messed up. So as leaders, we need to go first. We need to lead by example. Because after all, every single failure is just an opportunity to learn, right? So yes, experimentation is the future of growth, but that's not possible without psychological safety. And with these three maxims, we as business leaders can start creating psychological safety in our teams, which will in turn let us become more experiment-driven. You, ladies and gentlemen, us in this room, we have the phenomenal opportunity to drive that change in our companies.